Hello and welcome from the Viral Academy in Oldenburg. Today we want to take a look at this beautiful part. This is an intake manifold module that is installed in this VW. Johannes will now explain how it works. Intake manifold module. Here we have a so-called swirl flap design. Why is this done? You could have said that an intake manifold only gets one port per cylinder and that would be enough. The problem is different load conditions. That is, when a vehicle is idling or in part load operation, it doesn't need as much air, but it has to flow into the cylinder at a higher flow rate. You achieve that by having a tighter air supply. This is achieved by closing the flaps and letting the air flow into the cylinder through only one hole at a time. The advantage here is also that the air is introduced into the cylinder on one side. This means that it enters in a swirling motion. This gives the system a better filling. When I accelerate, I need more power, more fuel and of course more air. Then these flaps open and I have an improved air supply due to a larger cross section. Now we want to install this part in a vehicle. Now you can see wonderfully that it is installed transversely here in this engine. And now let's take it out. A little bit of diesel is leaking out of the fuel lines here, so we have to vent the system afterwards. Here we have two absolutely classic examples of why these modules fail. On the one hand, we see a lot of oil in the application area, which is probably being pushed into the other area by the crankcase ventilation. Secondly, we see soot. Soot, which is usually fed back into the intake manifold through the exhaust gas recirculation. Together this forms a so-called oil carbon. This oil carbon then increasingly clogs up the ducts and flaps over time. We then have a reduction in the cross section and, on the other hand, we have wear on the flaps and on the mechanics, because these naturally get stuck due to the oil and the carbon. So here the defect is caused by contamination. This is where the sluggishness occurs and you can see very clearly that the operating lever between the motor and the mechanism is already unhooked. You can push it up again, because that's how it should normally be. And when the lever is unhooked, it moves too far back and at some point the engine jams. The driver notices this by a changed driving behavior of the vehicle. For one thing, it no longer pulls properly from below. This means that you have the feeling of hanging on a rubber band. On the other hand, the car sometimes jerks when accelerating because we no longer have the right amount of air. In addition, the engine warning light often comes on. This is usually an exhaust relevant fault. So now we dismantle the throttle valve and the EGR valve. 
It is important to make sure that you use new gaskets when installing them, because they wear out with mileage. Now we have completed it. Before installation, please make sure to clean everything to avoid further problems. Keine weiteren Probleme sich eingebaut hat. So Johannes, I'll just turn on the ignition now, then you can start the fault diagnosis. It's important to check now, as I had loosened many plug connections. Okay, I'll start the diagnostics. Intake manifold position sensor. That's the error from before. We can delete the error now. Please check again whether the tester has now also deleted the error. Now there are zero errors stored. We have disconnected the fuel line and should now carry out a venting routine. We also do this via the tester. For this we use the special functions. Vent the fuel system. Switch off the engine and switch on the ignition. And now it starts with the venting. We now also hear the pump running and the air in the lines is then blown out by a fuel flush and then we have all the fuel lines full of fuel again. For sure, we also have to adapt the intake manifold flaps. This is a very, very important point that we must not forget. Here we have the point adjustment settings. We click on it once. Then we see the basic setting for the intake manifold flaps. We now select this. With the basic setting, the new modulus will be adapted to the vehicle. That means we run a program. It is important to follow the instructions of the diagnostic device during the process. When we press start, the actuator motor is controlled via the control unit. The intake manifold flaps open once completely and then close again completely. The control unit has now recorded the values for the feedback position sensor and at the same time the current consumption for the motor. The intake manifold module is now adapted to the vehicle so that it can work properly. We now start the vehicle and check if everything is tight. Great, the engine control light is off. The vehicle reacts very well and the driving behavior is also correct. The repair was successful. We have carried out a test drive and found no new problems. Nevertheless, we recommend a repeated fault diagnosis with the tester. It could be that something is wrong after the test drive. After that, the vehicle can be returned to the customer.
That's it from us on the subject of intake manifold modules. Did you like this video? Then send us a thumbs up. Do you have any questions or suggestions? Feel free to write us a comment.